Hey, hello, welcome to the special CUBE conversation here in our Boston studios. I'm John Furrier, your host of the CUBE. I'm here on the East Coast for our media week in New York City, where we have our studio at the NYSC on the floor. I'll be doing a lot of interviews with founders, investors. Wanted to get also kind of a hit here with founders and investors, but also a preview of the upcoming KubeCon, CNCF, Cloud Native Foundation, Compute Foundation doing again their annual North America event where the big topic is scaling infrastructure, generative AI is going to be the topic of conversation. Developers are in a feeding frenzy as more of the gen AI models continue to hit the open source community. And as they prepare for the wave of agentic applications, agentic systems, which are going to come right around the corner once the infrastructure gets set. We've got two great guests here. We have Jesse Robbins, who's the um, general partner at Heavybit, an investor, as well as he's also the, the uh, co-founder of Chef and pioneered the movement as we know today as you know, uh, recipes, uh, automation, all the services around configuration management, quite the uh, accomplishment and really set the agenda for the DevOps movement. Jesse, great to have you. And Amit Govern, who's also the co-founder and CEO of a hot startup called Kubia, really, really kind of changing the game and really accelerating the scale of infrastructure deployment and management. Uh, Jesse and Amit, great to have you on theCUBE. Oh, it's so awesome to be here. And it's, uh, yeah. you know, it's been a while. It feels like, uh, yeah. like so much is now happening that we all wanted to see happen. Well, Jesse, I'll start with you first because you have such a great pedigree and history, almost like a historian. I mean, OG of the configuration <laughs> management, Chef was really well known for really setting the table for that. I call it the gen one of what we now see across the board, really at the lower end of the stack where gen AI is actually working well because of all the history and workflows in configuration management, all those playbooks, all those recipes are all kind of well understood. So kind of nice, solid workflows there, but now with generative AI and platform engineering, like we're seeing in the explosion of things in the CNCF and at KubeCon with Kubernetes, a whole nother level is coming. You know, infrastructure is the top priority right now. You're seeing the chips come out faster, smaller, cheaper. We're going to see a wave of, of more innovation there. Obviously the CapEx with the hyperscalers, a lot of action on the infrastructure side. This is the table that will be set now for this next wave. What's your thoughts on this infrastructure wave? So the first thing that I, I believe is that, uh, you know, we, we always add more complexity when we ever, ever add new <clears throat> capacity. And uh, you know, part of the the story we've been writing for you know the last fifteen years has been about uh, adding power, adding you know new fundamental groundbreaking capabilities, um, and then uh, somehow we we always seem to make it you know harder to manage, which then results in an entirely new wave of infrastructure and tooling and knowledge that gets uh, kind of spread out. Um, and, you know, the other thing that's been really uh, kind of surprising is it's not like GPUs and sort of inferencing infrastructure is new. We've been building that into, you know, data centers and software kind of the whole time. Uh, but suddenly it has become this incredible, obvious priority in a way that um, frankly reminds me a lot of the sudden moment when we shifted to cloud where it just became a survival imperative. And so we're seeing an entirely new class of tools um, and sort of approaches that are both uh, required to support this new wave, as well as um, actually take advantage of it and get to do new and interesting things. You know, it's, it was fascinating as well. I talked to all the experts out there and when we dig in on the cube research side, you're seeing that obviously the data layer is changing, governance is super important to make data addressable, but all these data solutions are waiting in the wings for the infrastructure to kind of get their act together yeah. because there's kind of an accelerated push for put your dogma aside, put your fashion approaches aside, yep. get down to business, build the systems because this abstraction has to happen. And again, we're seeing advantage, ad, advances in known workflows being automated very quickly. And then that sets the table for that next wave, which is going to be this whole data layer. This is the yep. focus of KubeCon. This is where the action is. What's your, your thoughts on this scope in your mind, where we are on the progress bar here? Because this is, this is like, you know, it's coming down from the top too. It's like, come on, get your act together. Let's get settled. Let's start scaling. What's your, what's your view on this? So last year at the conference, I really kind of had a belief that we were going to see um, uh, we were going to see a a platform level shift uh, that was going to result in new like platform engineering tools becoming the priority, 
And what's happened with the, the you know, generative AI wave and, and tool chain is um, I think we're seeing a shift in the entire approach from top to bottom. Um, obviously, I invested in Kubia, um, and that's kind of a, a big uh, part of my own personal thesis uh, for what's changing. But sort of at the at the core, uh, what I believe is coming is number one, uh, you have to have an underlying change in the tooling that gets you uh, the ability to unlock the same as we had to do at the beginning of the DevOps cycle, where you had infrastructure automation and infrastructure as code. Um, we're now seeing a data pipeline emerge that is only possible now because we have, you know, these new massive scale real time uh, workloads, these new training workloads, which, you know, if you're uh, old enough and experienced enough, looks a lot like kind of ETL and classic database uh, abstractions. Um, but fundamentally, what we're seeing is an entire rewrite of the stack. Um, and it is uh, it is enabling a new category of of what I think of as kind of uh, data pipeline as the new secret sauce. I mean, I want to bring you in because we covered your launch when you came out of stealth and are kind of quasi stealth, but you were doing agents before agents was popular. Um, and now when you see things like Mark Benny up at Salesforce calling agent force, they're pivoting the entire company around this. Um, you got to be excited that the mainstream's kind of seeing the vision, but you're now, looking at it differently because you have this tailwind, number one. Number two, the pressure to get up and running with the infrastructure is there. And three, this it's not as easy as just connecting APIs and writing software. There's a level of complexity that Jesse pointed out that you guys are helping solve. Take a minute to explain how you tie that platform tooling rewrite of the stack into making people more productive because you have a concept called teammates, which is essentially just basically a co-pilot, if you will, for platform engineers, I mean, I'm oversimplifying it, but this is kind of where the rubber meets the road. Productivity, but also the services of developers have to be stable. What's your, what's your take on all this? Because you're kind of there in the front lines. Thank you, John. And as you can imagine, I'm pretty opinionated about this subject uh, for many reasons. We've been early pioneers in the space uh, doing uh, the building uh, even prior to uh, Gen AI and, and large language models uh, being popularized. So we had to cut our teeth really in the ground floor, needing to understand how to build these systems with all the infrastructure and all the stack already baked in before you can go and parachute agents on top of that and just assume that everything is going to orchestrate and work itself out. And this is really, you, you pointed this out, so I'm just going to call it out as well. Just having uh, the application layer and calling APIs is not enough. If you want to have a controllable and predictable outcome, you need to control everything from the infrastructure layer. You need to control the application layer and the UI because there's all sorts of ripple effects and downstream effects. If you're not architecting everything uh, pristine and that everything uh, just just works together with one another. And, and we have examples that we can uh, we can drive home but Mark Benioff did an unbelievable job popularizing the concept of agents, agent force being a big tailwind that we're seeing. Now we're saying there has to be that next graduation level. Where do you want to take your agents? What are the tasks that you're you're asking it to do? If all you're doing is querying uh, a Salesforce record and updating that, there that's one level of, of uh, outcome that you can imagine. But what if you want to have a very complex action and requires permissioning? and uh, and passing secrets and orchestrating uh, an entire stack using infrastructure as code, that's going to require a different level of complexity that you need to be architected properly before you can go and trust an agent to take an end-to-end -end task on your behalf. And that's what we're seeing. It's all about the trust. How do you earn the trust of the users in the platform engineering? Because they're expecting five nines. They're expecting 100% accuracy or else you lose their trust and you're out the you're out the door. I'm I'm really excited for this conversation because we got Jesse, the seasoned veteran, now investor, and you, the startup. And I want to add before we get into some of the product stuff that you're doing, let's talk about your journey because you're in the class of this wave of startups that was on the beachhead, kind of getting ready to start the company. You got some code. You're doing some cool things. You're kind of seeing the future. Time's on your side. You know, waiting for the wave to come. All of a sudden, boom! Everyone shows up. It's AI time, right? You, you were right there on the beachhead, building out early stage, super early stage. As a founder, 
Take us through the mindset of how you had to deal with that because you know, there are a bunch of other founders like you who have, were on the right track, like Jesse pointed out, machine learning has been around for a while. People are doing these things, building in these kinds of agentic concepts a little bit early because you see the opportunity, but then all of a sudden the world just spins in your direction and drops on the same beachhead. Take us through what's going on with you guys right now. How you, how as a founder you're navigating that and then you know, what your plan is. And Jesse, if you want to weigh in as an investor, because you look obviously in your, from your thesis standpoint, you're, you're iterating as well. Uh, uh, Mitt, we'll start with you. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 a great question, John, because it requires a little bit double clicking on the explanation. Agents and AI is there. It's table stakes for every conversation. We're not even using AI in our pitches because we understand that people already expect that as part of any type of conversation. What are we actually looking to do? We're looking to solve a very hard problem, a problem that Jesse in his own uh, respect tried to solve early on in chef days. How do you go and you take an end-to-end -end process that is currently taking a lot of your energy, time, and resources from the company and automate it in a way that doesn't uh, detract the entire organization in the wrong direction? It's called time to automation. How do you take the concept of time to automation, an end-to-end -end process that you can delegate away from your team into the hands of a capable team or teammate, in this case, we call them AI teammates, that you could go and assume that this is solved. So trust was the first layer. Are you able to trust AI to go and to own that task on your behalf in a way that the CISO won't come back to you saying, we're going through a SOC 2 audit <laughs> and you just teach you the completely wrong infrastructure or module to do so. So you have to go and abstract that part away. Trust that it can be done in a predictable, controllable, and compliant way so everybody in the organization could be at ease that you can use AI agents to essentially offload a lot of your day-to-day -day, uh, tasks and let your team being fully operational on what mission critical uh, aspects that humans can only do. So it's it's really that, that balance between enabling the humans to be at their best and highest use and the AI to take on all of that toil away from them. And, and we're seeing the AI teammates as a convergence of, of, of really the agentic system um, um, uh, coming to light. And then of course, having all the, the, the familiar platform engineering tools and processes in place that keep you on the same track and heading in the, in the upper left. Jesse, you're at, you meet a lot of founders. You're also investing in this way. What's the psychology? What's your perspective? Because, you know, this opportunities, you know, they sometimes you got to be careful what you ask for, <laughs> but if it comes too early, you got to be prepared. Take us through your reaction to, to this question. So the the first thing I'll say, and probably most importantly, is, you know, I, I look for, and my, my partners at Heavy Bit look for movements that we can help founders uh, build, create, uh, and, and amplify. And when we think about uh, uh, what we've been looking for in kind of the platform engineering space and sort of the, uh, you know, what comes next in the evolution of, of DevOps, DevSecOps, uh, you know, et cetera, what we were looking for was something that gave people another entire class of superpowers. And the thing that I, um, I frankly underestimated, um, you know, when, when Adam and I started chef years ago and, you know, when I started the velocity conference before that, we wanted to make, you know, everyone who is a software developer understand how infrastructure and automation worked and how that could be a superpower for them. And then we wanted to make that really, really easy. And what, what we found along the way is that while that work, I think, laid a good foundation, um, there's still a lot of work to do. You know, Adam's uh, back at it with uh, the system initiative, uh, which I think is, you know, trying to continue the problems that that uh, that we saw, you know, all those years ago and, and actually address them. Um, but uh, what surprised me when I started meeting with kind of uh, companies um, like Kubia um, was uh, everyone kind of was was excited about the potential, but they were really missing the hard stuff. You know, getting as as Amit just said, the, the it has to work right every time, or it's not automation, or you know, it's going to make problems worse. It doesn't actually you know make it better. Um, and so the thing that blew me away was um, he and his co-founder had started with all of the really, really hard stuff, you know, um, identity, access control, role-based uh, permissions modeling, um, you know, dealing with uh, state management and orchestration, all of the core 
infrastructure as code and sort of uh, infrastructure automation primitives that you know we've been working on uh, you know since since really the beginning and and in the prior waves everyone else worked on before us right and so when when he showed me it gave me the first demo what I saw um, I didn't actually believe I was like it's not possible for you to be able to do this at uh, you know at at the scale that you're going to need to with real customers, because it, you know, it'll be so hard to be predictable and you're going to have all of these edge cases, you know, all of the normal problems that one has in building and, and, and deploying systems at scale for, you know, managed by real people, you know, doing infrastructure and automation. Um, and, uh, the, the more we fought about it, um, and we fought for about a month and I'm just like, no, it can't do this. And I just kept, you know, getting smacked back back. It was like arguing with Adam, right. Uh, in the early days with chef. Yeah. And finally I said, okay, I I'm willing to believe, I'm willing to believe that what I'm seeing right now is the beginning of a new wave, um, a new set of capabilities, uh, that is, you know, built on top of, uh, all of the in advances that we're seeing um, around AI and around Gen AI, um, uh, coupled with all of the lessons that we've learned over the you know the last 15 years in in building these new systems, this you know kind of new way of doing things, um, and the part that most impressed me early on and continues to uh, impress me now is the focus on giving you know individual teams, people, um, you know, across the skill and ability. Uh, 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 spectrum, um, not only a new set of capabilities, but frankly, just a lot of time back for the work that we really all hate doing. Like, you know, no matter what, uh, we do in automation, what I really just wanted to do is have fewer tickets to manage and not have to work on the same BS stuff all the time, which always kept me from, you know, building the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And it's been pretty exciting to see, you know, ticket queues, getting managed, you know, not the actually valuable stuff where you have to think and do work and engineering, but the, the frankly BS stuff that is just hyper repetitive, you know, rote day to day, um, that no one likes doing, there's never time for it. So it ends up eating your nights and weekends. Um, and we're able to start automating that away now through delegation, through this, you know, additional capability model, um, that, uh, you know, I was skeptical about when I first saw it. And now, um, I, I think it's, it's, you know, delegation is the new automation. Yeah, I love that delegation concept, teammates, trust, delegation, huge, principles in this new abstraction to make people more productive and, and scale the infrastructure. Amit and Jesse, I want to get your thoughts on this because I've been sitting on the queue, banging my fists against the table, like infrastructure is not just like SaaS. You're not going to have all this ARR growth. It's a unique market because you got to do the work with customers and because no one's going to hand the keys over to you and say, hey, go run wild in my infrastructure. The stuff can't break. I mean, there's a lot of things that go in the sales motion, proof of concepts, pilots, and ultimately getting into production. Can you guys share the traction you're seeing and what customers need to think about when they deploy? Because again, no one's going to hand the keys to the kingdom over in infrastructure, just the way the game has always been. But now with some of the AI scale, it is happening faster. So take us through some of the uh, success paths you had, Amit and, and Jesse, and, and comment too on this new infrastructure evaluation stage, because they got to see production up and running, you have a kind of robust, agile environment now with, with Kubernetes. Where, where is that market? Because you got to meet the customers where they are, but also understand they don't want, they don't want any hallucinating. They don't want any, any problems. <laughs> Take us through that. Because that's well, an important don't point. Don't want, traction. cannot have. Cannot right? have, you, zero. You, you know, you, if, you're, if you're a junior sysadmin or DevOps engineer or platform engineer and your first day on the job, you're like, oh yeah, great. I'll start working the ticket queue. Uh, and and you wipe out the whole infrastructure and cause all this damage, like you know, you're, that's gonna that's a rough first day for a person. If it's you know this new uh, style of automation where you're getting these these you know AI powered teammates, like that teammate's not gonna be on the team anymore, right? And uh, those stakes just starting out right away, like that is part of why uh, I think getting started productively is so hard. But like that is an entirely new pattern where day one, you're able to show up and be like, yep, this is going to offload workload. You're going to get, you know, questions and queries from, from the teammate. Uh, but, uh, but you can expect that it's going to work within the bounds that you, you set up and be predictable enough um, to really make everything happen. 
I mean, you work with some big names and this is how it works. The big ones are in first because they're building their own infrastructure. They have teams, um, they need teammates with, with the AI. You don't have to name names you don't want to, feel free to if you do. What are some of the motions you have? Because I think this is again, a tell sign to how fast it's moving, but also the requirements that are needed, those hurdles you have to overcome. You got good beachhead. I love the positioning. What's going on with the motion with the customers? What are they saying? Before I go into the customers, and I also have to be conscious of NDAs because I don't want to breach any at the last mile with some of these processes. Uh, we have a story that has to be copacetic with how agentic systems work and the teammate concept work. If you don't tell the story the right way, it's very easy to to lose uh, to lose a rope, right? It's a concept of how do you tell the story from you're hiring a team, a crew, right? If if maybe not the right approach, but if you want to hire Johnny Depp and, and the Black Pearl, right, as a captain, what how do you go about it? You hire the captain first. He's your command center, right? You can go and have him orchestrate the whole layer. Then you have your navigator. That's another crew member. He's a monitoring specialist, say, if it's a Kubernetes a, a cluster you're trying to manage. Then you have the engineer. That's your performance expert, the security officer. The mechanic, the cargo specialist, you can go down the list of all the different crew members you want to have. They're working as a team, but you have one interface being the captain, being your point of contact that you interface with. How you're going about this is you're essentially hiring the black pearl in this case in order to go and to set sail. I, I would say uh, more like the Starship Enterprise myself, <laughs> like uh, it's a, my, my preferred thing, like, you know, we're in Starfleet. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you gotta, I, you gotta have the probably, captain um, of the ship for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, guys, this is this is the conversation that's coming into CNCF uh, KubeCon this yep. year, and I want to get your perspective leading into it because, um, what do you think the mandate? Two questions: What's the mandate for the industry? I mean, I'm hearing, you know, get your act together, guys. Stop arguing. Get stable. Kubernetes is getting boring, which is having its Linux moment. Okay, great. But what's happening around that? What needs to get done? And then two, what do you hope to see happen coming out of KubeCon? Well, let, let's start by just celebrating the fact that Kubernetes as a platform is boring and stable. <laughs> uh, you know, that that to me is uh, is the sign of, you know, what, what we want out of our infrastructure, right? Like um, you want innovation at the places where there's value to be created and you want infrastructure to be stable and work well. And uh, so, you know, the fact that we, uh, are reaching this place with uh, you know a platform as significant um, as, as Kubernetes um, just means that you know that's creating the new space for people to get excited and build. And so, from my perspective, um, I, I think this is excellent, and um, uh, I'm you know I think it's good news. Um, it just means that we uh, you know we get to work on more interesting problems now that we've sort of laid that uh, you know the 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 platform foundation. I mean, your thoughts going into KubeCon, I know you have a big presence there. What do you hope to see and what's the mandate for the industry? So I think everyone's looking at KubeCon this year in Salt Lake City as being the breakthrough for AI in DevOps. And while I'm very bullish on this, uh, being one of the category creators, I'm welcoming the rest to usher in and to help us create because the, the bigger the category, the more uh, the more energy around it, the more obviously funding there will be for our future round. So it's always a good thing. Nonetheless, we also have to caution and throw some caution in the wind that there's going to be a lot of experimentation going on. Yeah. And you always have to be very vigilant how you approach the world of AI so it doesn't uh, spoil it for everybody. You have to understand that there's different uh, checks and balances you have to put in place when you're evaluating AI solutions. And I think there's going to be some very interesting solutions coming out of uh, KubeCon this year that we're looking forward to to uh, to, to to see. So uh, we're we're excited about this. Guys, great stuff. Um, final question for both of you guys, uh, Jesse. You brought it up. I love that whole narrative around solving bigger problems, building on top of Kubernetes, totally our religion. We've been to every KubeCon, by the way, since day one. We yep. were, I was there and Lou Tucker and me and, and uh. JJ were rapping about what we should call that event. Um, but you know, when it came out of Google, that was a seminal moment. We all kind of saw this as an interoperable opportunity to create some stability. So we're very happy we're there. Now the question is, what is going to be built? So I want to ask you guys what you see as your vision 
for some of the things that could inspire, motivate other entrepreneurs, other folks who are platform builders and, and architects who are looking at a distributed computing architecture across the enterprise. It's no longer just cloud in the main public cloud, it's cloud operations. So, you know, infrastructure has to run at the edge. All these things are coming. The data layer is going to be flipped upside down. Agentic systems will be powering a new kind of application that's generative, another category. What are some of the things, guys, you see in your visions um, around what's going to be coming next? What will be built? What do you hope to be built? Feel free to throw the North Star out there if you want or. <laughs> or. Yeah, so so from my perspective, there's a couple things. Um, so the first is, is that uh, my partners and I at HeavyBit really, really, really believe in local first. And that uh, has a, a lot to do with the fact that um, you know, the types of systems that we're seeing and uh, the type of applications that are going to get built, um, you know, the, uh, the, the iteration cycle is going to have a lot to do with uh, what you're able to build, you know, locally. Um, we're investors in a company called Continue, which is uh, doing, uh, uh, it's the, you know, kind of leading open source uh, code assistant plugin uh, for, um, for, you know, every uh, IDE environment. And um, the reason we're seeing all that excitement is because developers are wanting to run things locally um, on their, their own devices. Um, uh, that is enabled, of course, by um, a new wave in you know, developer workstations. I'm pretty pumped to get my new, uh, my new MacBook Pro with the M4. Um, and so um, I think that we're, we're gonna see a really interesting wave of local first, which is what enables edge first, right? If you can't, uh, if you, if you can't build in an environment where you're running locally, it's very hard to build these kind of distributed edge oriented uh, uh, workflows um, and applications. And so I think that that um, is the pattern that, that we're going to see a lot more of. We're going to see more in kind of the serverless lightweight model. Um, and the, in this next year, we're going to have to figure out what we do to manage these massive, you know, bare metal GPU environments um, because all the work that we did for Kubernetes, like, um, and for you know standard computing and virtualization and everything else, well, that's still largely unsolved in uh, in the rest of the space. Um, there's some really interesting open source and some commercial projects. So um, I think the next enabler that we're seeing there is number one, local for local first development patterns for all kinds of. Uh, workflows um, for you know uh, training optimization for you know the evolution of rag and and all those pieces and then the second part of that um, is seeing the entire tool chain shift to be able to accommodate this not as a special case but as a default case for almost every application um, and kind of the last piece uh, that I think um, you know we're, we're going to start to see is um, a lot of work in measurement now the reason I say that is like, um, you know, I, uh, uh, Kubia has the benefit of being, me, having me on the board. So I'm sure every question uh, I ask <laughs> is of course, brilliant and uh, well-defined, but, um, other people that are not as smart as me might want something like uh, ROI, uh, you know, the ability to actually measure and test and understand both what these new applications are doing and the benefit to the people that are relying on them, that are using them, uh, that are needing to improve them. And so I think that there's an entire both kind of observability and reinforcement learning uh, uh, chain coming that uh, I think is all part of that new data pipeline that I really do believe is kind of the, the new secret sauce. And um, that that chain uh, is is going to be what we're seeing get built over the next year or two that sort of enables everything else. Well, obviously, um, I think that the uh, the teammates model um, as the ex the like productionized version of agentic workflows and all that other excitement um, is going to be the big thing this year. Yeah, and by the way, Jesse, just to point out, just the, we just did a story on this edge piece where the LLMs and the inference coming in at the edge, the new data comes in at the edge, never has to leave the edge. So yep. there is that local aspect that is a stack in and of itself. So, yep. and it's, you can't just go to a model in a central repo to go exactly. learn. It's going to learn at the edge. So a whole nother dynamic developing that will create innovation opportunities. So nice call out there. We'll have to double click on that on, an, on another, another, another I have many podcast. thoughts, so yes, let's yeah, do we, it. Let's definitely do that. Amit, oh, your vision, because I think you know, you're on to something where uh, as this progresses, I see clearly agents, sub-agents, we just wrote a, um, 
multiple stories on The Economist last month on the print edition around digital twins and how agents and the relationship of sub-agents, this is now getting into kind of like more policy-like thinking where the system architecture is dealing with all the agents. So you have a, an, an orchestration of agents now, a whole nother abstraction. <laughs> what is your vision of where this goes? Because you're now hitting on the productivity piece, which will then flip into scale. And so everything Jesse said, I can probably give you a slightly uh, uh, different nuance, but it's all there. First of all, local localized deployments. You, for customers who are doing the inferencing, it has to be on their side, has to be at the edge. So we're allowing that. As part of our model, we're actually allowing you to go behind your own firewall to deploy in a local Kubernetes operator, allowing you to do some uh, some inferencing even with Olama in, in your edge. So allowing you to do the local deployments, that's huge for any enterprise wanting to go and to have large scale deployments, they're going to have to solve that. And if you don't give that uh, solution out the box, you're probably not going to go to the enterprises, at least not initially. So that's probably the first thing we can say. What we're building, and I think you also referenced, is around the agentic system and that we're calling the AI teammates. So if you're hiring the crew, you're having all these sub agents or sub teammates who are actually going and, and orchestrating this, this entire sympathy that's going up to the central command center, or in this case, the control plane that you're going in and you're prompting. So the ability to go and to uh, really abstract away all of these day-to-day -day tasks from the infinity loop of the platform engineering, that's going to be kind of where we're going next. Where do you go in terms of Kubernetes management, just-in-time permission handling, uh, all the way towards cost management and, and door metrics and allowing self-service. All of this is really the, the infinity loop that we're trying, that we're seeing time and time again, multiple solutions that people are coming to us say, how do you use a teammate model on top of my pain here? How do you go and, and make this pain go away? Because tooling and bespoke solutions hasn't been working for me. It's been more toil than it has actually been serving me. How do you go and, um, and address the teammate model or the agentic system model with my use cases? And we're seeing a lot of success in the field. We're actually having some of the largest, can't say their name, unfortunately, but some of the largest DevOps solutions in the industry, dog fooding their own solutions that they've built using to Kubia. Uh, a phenomenal success. We'll probably be writing about it once, once it's uh, made public. Well, Amit, congratulations. Yeah, you better. Congratulations. <laughs> on, we're, we're covering them like a blanket. We're watching these guys. So uh, congratulations. And again, I know you're on the beachhead right now, but you get a lot of headroom ahead of you. And again, you're in a good path. And Jesse, thank you for spending the time again, coming on both as a luminary and pioneer and all the hard work you've done to pioneer to the DevOps movement. And also you're doing work at Heavy Bit, great investment thesis. And, and thanks for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate the yeah, it's great to be back and, and I want to do a lot more. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll see you at KubeCon again. KubeCon should be great. And uh, thanks so much for the, for the time. Thank you thanks so for much. Having us. Okay, Appreciate I'm in it. Boston studio here as I head to New York for our media week. We're talking to founders, we're talking to investors. There's so much action going on at the infrastructure layer, the data layer, they're plowing along. They haven't yet realized their world's going to flip upside down. Ultimately, at the end of the day, the application market will have agentic systems. And it's just another application, it's a new category, it's going to change the game. And of course, all this foundational work's being done. At the infrastructure, once that's done, we're going to see a, a bigger wave of innovation coming. Of course, the Cube's got you covered. Local, centralized, global, wherever, whatever, no matter what it takes to get the story, we'll do it. And I'm John Furrier, the Cube. Thanks for watching.